So let's move right into this idea and concept of heaven and earth and also yin and yang right from the very beginning. And let's take that as, as kind of our window or context to go right into the standing. With our standing practice, of course, there's many, many elements and many angles we can approach it at. And we've touched upon many, many of those. Again, different emphasis. Uh, so let's take this as our window of, of entrance into standing. To start with this have heaven and earth, the concept and phrases of heaven and earth. So being aware of heaven as the sky. And of course, earth is the ground. Simply being aware of those two different directions or simply two different places helps us already to actually, at least subtly, and then more and more so, open up the spine and open up the posture. So for example, just be very, very conscious of your crown directly facing the sky, flush. So if my chin is up a little bit, my crown is angled respective to the sky or to the heavens. So let's get the crown perfectly matching and facing the sky and the tailbone pointing directly to the ground. Just that, notice what that does for the posture, for the alignment, for the spine, just that. Crown facing the sky, flush to the sky, tailbone directly pointing to the ground, just that. And again, feel free to, if you have any comments or questions at any point along the way. We can get a little bit more uh, active. Uh, we have to be careful that we don't get too effortful. It's okay if we work a bit more with the body, but watch when we get too muscular about it and we're efforting, efforting too much. But we can get a little bit more active with this exactly the same thing, but a little more active. So right now I just in kind of a passive way or purely energetic or attention wise, simply having your attention here facing flush to the sky and our attention tailbone being true to pointing to the ground. So that's a, in a sense, a passive awareness or we're just setting that up and noticing, setting that up and letting things happen. We can get a little bit more active um, so I can have a reaching of the crown, or that would be probably too effort filled, a floating, rising of the crown to meet the sky. So uh, just like a, a balloon will rise just naturally, it's, a balloon is not efforting to rise. It's just natural for the balloon to rise and float. So let that nature be the nature of the crown. It'll, it's lighter than air. The crown naturally will float out to the sky. And imagine the tailbone as has some density, some weight to it. Or you could even imagine a weight tied to it so that it's pulled to the earth. The crown is actually floating, actively floating directly up to the sky. In fact, if you weren't attached, the crown would just continue rising. Very recently, we had the imagery of the balloon with the string tied to a, a weighted base. The weighted base was our lower body. The spine was the, uh, the string was the spine and the balloon was the head. If you cut that string, the balloon would just continue rising. So if, if we weren't one piece, weren't connected, the crown would just float up directly to the sky and the tailbone would just fall to the earth. So have those actions happening simultaneously.
Now you'll probably again want to use the out breath to release tensions because this will create tensions in the body, mentally and muscularly, or simply because the body is being opened, allowed to stretch, allowed to open. The muscles will tend to resist that a little bit because they're being gently coaxed to lengthen and open. So there will be an ensuant tightening. So notice that and release those on the out breath as much as you can. That's why we don't want to effort too much and do it muscularly because the body will react and pull back. So we want to gently coax it so it's more intentional. It's an intentional action, intentional directions. So there is an over pulling of the body that the body is going to resist very strongly. So from the Don Chan down is Yin, and it's pulled down or falls down with gravity. You can be a little bit more active in pulling the hips down or just hanging it with gravity. But basically from the Don Chan down, it's Yin, and down direction is Yin, releasing down. Up action, up movement, up direction is Yang. So from the down, Don Chen up is Zhang. So this is Zhang, this is Yan. We want to avoid again too much efforting, too much struggling, which is just going to work against everything we want. The body's going to resist and tighten. So the Yang is just like a rising balloon. It just, its nature is to float and to rise. And the nature of Yin is to sink, just like water finds the lowest places. A rock or a boulder rolls down a hill. No different than that. From here down, just drops, wants to reach the earth. From here up, wants to reach the sky. Here down, wants to reach the earth. And releasing on the out breath. So yin and yang are simultaneous and always occurring. Any comments or questions thus far? And feel free if you want to gently rock out of that for a bit, if you need a bit of a rest. But another very, very much related description, it's just kind of describing this in a, using a different imagery. Yeah. And we've actually mentioned this recently. It's like if you had an aquarium or a lake and all the sediment and particulates are up in the lake. So that aquarium where the water is very cloudy. So the sandy part, the particulates, that's earth and that's yin. We want that to settle, to be its own nature, to settle. So the sediment settles to the bottom of the aquarium. And then the water becomes clearer and clearer. And that clarity is, is the yang quality, it becomes clearer and clearer. And the settling, sinking is a yin quality, and it follows its nature. So we want those, again, two different things happening at the same time. Uh, that's also the same as weight at her side. So just to kind of relate another phraseology that we employ sometimes, weight at her side. The weight at her side doesn't, we don't want that to pull everything down. And when we say, you know, settle the weight, sink the chi, settle the weight, we don't want that to pull everything down. That has a commensurate, commensurate really thin, opening, clarifying of the body. So just as the silt settles, the water becomes clearer and clearer. And that water is that emptiness or clarity, that's the yang, and the settled firmness of the silt settling more and more is yin. Someone had a comment or a question? 
No, I guess I just, you know, you know, I'm always sort of in having experiences, uh, um, you know, check back against sort of the words because I, I guess I always respect the experience I'm feeling in my body. I'm never entirely sure that fits to the words or the description, but it is this, you know, to use your metaphor, like the, the sediment, it's a very internal feeling like it's not um a sagging of the muscles it's not a like even to talk about the release of tension in the legs it doesn't that's not what I'm feeling when you talk about that and when I put my awareness to that is is that it's something more inside that because it almost felt like a not not a not a tension is the wrong word, but in that settling, that that rising had a co-relationship, right? That the more settlement, the more rising. So it was almost like a little pressure in the two directions. Is, is that, sorry, your patience as I try to like no. feeling things that I haven't felt before and is, is this, kind of the territory you're talking about or is it something else so are you feeling that the the rising or the clarifying is happening it's 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 happening yeah yeah i get because usually i'm muscularly adding something right yeah Yeah. so i would like to talk uh, talk about that uh because this is a a a very uh, important um development and uh it's 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 on the path of development and uh, it will happen as very interesting it's very cool it's very interesting uh especially when it becomes more and more palpable the we say you know settling and releasing or that down direction there's a commensurate opening or emptying now of course when we're we're talking about it using words and then when this is fairly new or they're, they're just words and we're maybe trying to do some of that or opening for maybe that to happen. That will happen. It's action reaction. One of Newton's law, you know, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. It becomes that palpable, that uh, physical, that real. And at first it'll, and it'll be a, it's an energetic echo or response. Uh, but that informs the physicality more and more and makes the physicality do. So it is an actuality that the down or releasing or settling makes the rising, the opening, makes the freeing, the lightening, up, the straightening, the opening, the space, for example, specifically the space between the vertebrae, for example this happens. So at first, again, fake it till you make it, do the best you can, stay open to the, but that's what happens. So it sounds like you're, you're getting that response. You're getting that effect. You're getting that result. And that's a huge thing because that, that's a me. That's, this is part of the development that's on this path. So literally as I release and hang out, I am opened. I am straightened. Now that requires a certain um, lightness of body, openness of body, subtlety of sensitivity to, to sense that and also to allow it. But again, that's the whole cultivation process of Tai Chi and the Tai Chi exercises. Not the Tai Chi set or the Tai Chi itself. We take this into the Tai Chi set. All these exercises we do our cultivation for the mind and body specifically is talk more about the body the body becoming more fine like that silken sail rather than a uh, heavy canvas sail or even a sail that's not even open it's all collapsed so you're, you've developed enough cultivation where the body can allow that echo allow that response and enough ting or sensitivity, cultivation of awareness to sense it. Now, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of work to get to that point. 
and it takes a lot of concentration to stay with it when it starts to happen. But it's very cool. It's very interesting uh, because it because things happen for you, and and these responses, these effects are very, they feel very very good, and you can feel and sense the healthiness of it, the health giving qualities of this. I mean, if you can imagine if your spine is just opened and your joints are just opened and you become more spacious and you can just feel the healthful consequences of that, the healthful changes of that. And so these are the, these are the rewards that start to be gifted. But they're gifts that we've earned because right, it's taken time, work and consistent work and struggling in the dark, reaching in the dark doing the exercises, and then you get these little glimmers, whoa, the light was turned on for a moment, or the light over here is turned on, and I'm getting these responses, rewards, effects. So that's um, the kind of the goal that we're mining for, these returns, these effects, these results. So we do all this work that are causes, all these works and all the exercises, and uh, these are causes, 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 and eventually we get the effects. So comments or questions about that? And more and more, that's what informs what you do and how you do it. So when you start to collapse a little bit, when you're doing your Tai Chi or any movement, or even going through your day, when you start to tighten or collapse a little bit or misalign a little bit, or you're, you're not as you're getting more opaque again, more sediment, tension, more opaque and not as uh, clear and translucent, not as good a, of an empty vessel. It becomes blaringly obvious, more and more, glaringly obvious. And so then it comes, you can then realign again. So it becomes more and more self-informing, self-adjusting, self-supporting, guiding. And, and that's, those are the rewards. And, and then you start to realize just how internal this is, how personally intimate this is, because it takes a fine, fine awareness thing and continuous evolving cultivation, continuously. And because you start at first, it's such a little glimmer of how, sens how subtle it is, how fragile that awareness is. And so you want to do more work so it becomes more palpable, more solid, more substantial, sticks around longer, and it it's, becomes very motivating. Any comments or questions about that? Yeah, I mean, I already can feel like, I guess it's giving me a glimmer more of you know, when you talk about Wu Wei, that, you know, how small the doing is, and I'm already back into, okay, to recreate that, I have to you know, and, and it, and then it changes the effect in the body, right? Like it's, that's, that when you said the word fragile, it's like, yep, yeah, it's that fragile. <laughs> Again, a very, very cool and a, and a really neat place to start to be in and start to touch is where it just takes a thought and it comes back. It just, oh, I'm, I'm a little bit condensed. I'm, I'm not as open as, and just that thought brings it back. And it's not something you can share with words. It's not something you can generally give to somebody. And when you start, and that's, that starts to happen. This is why people want to go further with an internal art and why they want to stay on it the rest of their life, because it's so amazing, so fascinating, and so alchemical. alchemical. It's, we're getting into the alchemical aspects. And, and on the other side of that, like it only takes a thought to lose it. <laughs> you know, it takes a thought to get it back, but it only takes one little thing and it's gone. Absolutely. So that balance, yeah. Absolutely. And so again, um, I, I try to I try to turn that into a motivation again. It's so easy to lose it. That's why I got to keep training and keep practicing because it is so. Um, It is so, um, uh, 
not abstract, but um, it's like uh, spirit. It's very spirit-like. If we don't stay very clean and clear in our consciousness, we'll never see spirit or never sense spirit. Spirit's always there, but we're not refined enough to sense it. So these things are so internal and so transparent that it just takes, like you say, uh, a worry, a concern, a distraction, a loud noise, um, drive, you know, any, driving, anything. So here's a, a simple addressing of that. As soon as our attention goes out into the world, we'll lose, we'll tend to lose it. That's why this is another reason why it's called internal path, internal arts, that so much time in, for so long, it's all this work internally. And it also works the other way is that the internal thoughts, we may have mentioned the other day, well, actually it was in a different, a different class, that outer sounds, we know outer sounds and outer activity are very distracting and pulls us off our center or off our inner connection. Well, our thoughts are simply inner noise. We have outer noise, we have inner noise. And those thoughts are very loud in, in that they're very colorful and they, they're very emotional, they trigger emotions. So just like the outside distracts us, the inside distracts us. But the first process is all this internal awareness and work. And the good thing about all this internal awareness and work, it's just like a mantra or any meditation that they use a trick or a tool or a mantra or a mandala um, or an imagery or a candle to focus on to occupy the monkey mind. Well, we don't need a mantra because we have so much stuff to work on that that occupies our mind and settles the internal. And so we have to watch out about being pulled out outside. So a huge part of the path is getting more, is turning things inward and getting more intimate in our inner world, our inner self and clarifying that. And then more and more, we can start to be in the outside world again. And that becomes now the challenge, the needed challenge that we ask for because we're doing so well, doing much better inside and being more true and congruent inside with our focus and our development. Now, can I take this out into the busy, active, hectic world? That becomes our needed challenge, our next requested challenge, because now we're ready for that. But yes, as we get this more and more, you start to become more clearly aware of how easily it is to lose this. So again, hopefully that becomes motivation for further, even more consistent training. So we don't lose it so easily. Or the first step, of course, we just become more, more quickly aware when we lose it, more um, glaringly aware when we lose it. And then also next is that we're able to coincide losing it and keeping it more and more, and then more and more keeping it. But that takes continual training. But these are the rewards. These are the, the jewels from the art that you're starting to get. And as we continue to mine, so we become wealthy with these gifts. So that it takes a, a tremendous amount to be pulled away and pulled off. And then when we are, we know how to get back. We know the territory. We know how to get back. Not only do we notice, know that we're off, we know how to get back. So it becomes a tool, a very handy tool, not an, not an abstract idea. It's one of the reasons why I, 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 I wanted more than just meditation. Some of you know I started with meditation even before Tai Chi and Aikido. And one of the reasons why I got into, or one of the main reasons I got into Tai Chi and Aikido is I, I was so frustrated and losing the wonderful qualities of meditation as soon as I got out of my meditation room. So these mind-body arts allow us to anchor this. So when you lose it, 
you're more conscious more quickly of when you lose it and you know how to get back because even the things that you noticed Cheryl when you're describing it you said it's more energetic and all but still in here it's still there's a map there's a there's a map inside because it's inside it's not out here in a, in a distant foreign way it's internal intimate it's inside so more and more that becomes uh, familiar and so you know how to get back now Luann, you also mentioned a specific uh, drill we're doing exercise so let's approach that and see if there's specific questions in there and even if there isn't it's a good exercise to to do again so this is just another just an exercise to work with yin and yang two different directions of energy bringing it together into the center into the core and directing it so by the way uh, just before we do that another way of working with yin and yang in these two directions is more fully or more globally where so we've been talking so far about you know basically from here up is is yang the rising here down is yin that's one one way of working with it an important way and in, in one 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 category but another category or another way of working with it is it's more throughout the whole length of the body it's still the same directions up is yang down is yin but we get that happening through the entire body so let's just touch upon that in our standing so we want to start with down or sinking because that's more primary and again eventually that will trigger and make the rising consequentially happen so if we hang out whatever phraseology or imagery you can use to really get that yin happening yin direction so whether that's hanging out from the string or whether that's weight underside feeling the weight in the bottoms of your feet or it's simply sinking the mind and want that down so so that yin is happening through the entire body not just from here down but through the entire body so the body becomes open transparent so gravity can work freely through without collapsing it but work freely through let down happen let weight happen let the muscles hang off the bones let down occur but through the entire length of the body and then the rising the echo the return wave ground force moves up through the body through the whole length through the whole length of the body through the crown from the crown everything settles through the body down through the feet through the whole body and then up simultaneously but even even more informing as a result of consequentially because of the sinking heaviness settling but rising through the entire body. So we can have the full length, or we can be more categorical from here up is yang rising, here down is yin sinking. But ultimately, everything is, is global. So different, different drills. If we go into the exercise we talked about, just a little bit more actively working with this, sinking down, drawing the earth energy up into the body, into your core, sending it up to the heavens. So breathing out, because in general, breathing out is sending out, issuing. Breathing in is drawing in, gathering. And then drawing the heavenly energies, the sky energy into our core, and with our intention, our mental direction, send it out through our legs, feet into the earth. Drawing it in, up from the earth. This is the junction. So we hold it here for a moment, pull the navel towards the spine for a moment, a little bit of pressure here to squeeze it in, to pack it in. So we get to absorb some of it, store some of it. But we also want to stay open, an open conduit, open flowing system to the heavens, from the heavens into the body we want to keep some of that store it nurture that in the body so they can nurture the body and then we also want to be an open flowing conduit sitting into the earth being 
fed, nourished by the earth, being an open, flowing conduit. So make that very intentional, very clear and intentional. That means the energy will be moving much clearly and strongly. So when you come in, hold this momentarily, hold your breath momentarily, pack it in, turn it over, and then send, open up your body so it can move through the body freely and clearly. Draw it in with your breath and intention. Hold it here for a bit longer so that you can absorb some of this chi into your tissues. And then send the old used up energy out and down. So there's waste products in the energy. Energy is gray or darkened, or that's where again, silt and particulate in the water. You send that old used up energy out. Draw in fresh, vibrant, fertile energy from the earth. Store it. Open, clear conduit. And down. Okay, let's come back to standing and touch upon another imagery and symbolism. In Eastern arts, the, the reason why the Don, another reason the Don Chan is so important, central, it's considered the, the, the intermediary point, the junction between heaven and earth. Another reason, why, again, why the Don Chan, Lord Don Chan is, is so, so important. It is the meeting place, the junction between heaven and earth. And to take that a step further, human beings in Taoism are called a divine stem, or potentially we are a divine stem. A divine stem in that we can be a conduit of heavenly and earthly energies. A living divine stem. And sometimes that's referred to the spine becomes that divine stem. But that's again, just different ways of focusing or categorizing the entire physical being. And ultimately humans themselves, a human can become a divine stem. That you're open to the earth's intelligence and wisdom, and you're open to universal guidance, a higher intelligence, a higher mind. You become an open, empty vessel, open conduit, living divine stem. So as we stand in posture, you can even use this as a nice meditation, is being aware of this possibility of being a divine stem, a living conduit between earth and heaven. Notice what that does for you, how that changes you. And when you lose it, because you will lose it, but maybe just even a thought, come back to some physicality, the physical center, physical alignment. And that is a good place to start to realign. <laughs> 